Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to not more Unicron Chronicle news, but to a um, little bit of a, um, uh, just spraying the word of a news video. So, uh, we so this guy is named Marco Mero from Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it, I'm calling it Twitter. Um, apparently, he is, he's a very reliable um, source when it comes to Nintendo Directs, and he recently made a post about a one week ago, or actually one week ago, where he posted this in on Twitter with uh, it's A toilet paper, M fire, and J uh, derelict uh, house building. Now people didn't know what to begin with this at first, but he's talking about what is going to be happening in the Nintendo Direct in code, and with April, that's apparently the Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door remake. Hold up one second. That makes sense. Yeah, what, wait, what did you say? Sorry, you cut out there for a second. I was going to say with, like, paper towels, toilet paper, and, like, that's the paper. Mm -hmm. like, like, paper Mario. Yeah, he's talking like in code. Paper emoji. Yeah, so that means that the game is, is... He's saying that that game is going to be coming out in April. And the thing... So, but the thing is, though, the game has, doesn't have a release date yet. And be, with the Switch 2 on the horizon, they want to get... If they, they say that he's, they're going to either announce the Switch 2 either in March or June of this year... And I think they'll do it for June because if they announce it in March with this with Paper Mario coming out in April, that would kind of kill a lot of interest on the Switch because why would yeah? So I, think, so. I think that they will release it in June. The they'll announce the Switch to in June, and Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door will come out in April. Now in May, they he has the emoji for fire, and this is what he's saying that the elusive Fire in the Four remake is going to be coming out in May. That'd be neat. Mm -hmm. That I'm really hoping that it does because I'm. I mean, Fire Emblem Four. I. God. Oh I my. personally hope for Fire Emblem Four. I hope it's not. I, I, if, I hope it is. If I they do. See it with um, with cutscenes and everything. I no no. I told Crystal like the cutscenes would be amazing, especially the ending of the first generation. If that's a cutscene, oh my god, I would love to see what, how that would be in a cutscene. Yeah, I'd love to see how they would animate that, and especially voice act it. Yeah. Like, more than anything else, even if they keep, like, the the overworld, like, just sprite, like, portraits just talking, if they voice acted things, I think that it would be incredible. Like, seriously, like, we saw how good Engage was, like, um, and plus, I'm wondering how the game will look after Engage, because obviously, Three Houses was, you know, decent for what it well, was. Engage, they... they're going to, if they're going to have it where they already have a source material like to work off of rather than like just a completely new like ip sort of like a completely new like concept for it then well you mean like use a new like engine or something what's up you mean like use a new engine or something well no i mean like um because it would be a remake rather than like a completely original thing it would actually look like you know, maybe a little bit closer to the original games and stuff like that, and like what it actually looked like. Uh, I and don't know. I like think the more so like anime, like Genshin art style that has like come in since Three Houses and has come to stay like in Engage. I honestly think they're going to be if whatever if it is Final Four. I think they're going to be pushing the game to its like they're going to push the Switch to its maximum like potential. Because we see, oh, if it is, absolutely. Because we've seen that, like, you know, after Three Houses, and Three Houses was, you know, not the best looker, but after some yeah. time, we saw, like, how great they cleaned up Fire Emblem. When you come from Three Houses to Engage, like, the, the, um, the, the art style or, like, the design looks so cleaned up compared to what Three Houses was. It's insane. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And with this being the third game on the Switch, the third Fire Emblem game, like mainline game on the Switch, with it being a remake, I really think it's going to be looking very good. And we're going to hear so many voice actors that have yet to be in the game because, you know, with Heroes, like obviously we're going to be hearing Grant George from Sigurd, Erica Mendez from, you know, Deirdre, Cassandra Lee Morris with Julia, Christian Lamonte with Selef, um, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Clawworthy with Finn. And one thing I'm actually very Can't much looking wait. forward to is not just the main characters, but the substitutes. Because the substitutes, none of them have been, are in Heroes yet. And we don't know, that's a whole new cast of characters. They have to voice act. That will be interesting, I think. Because everything to do with the substitutes will probably be just a very interesting look to see, like, 
hey, what are they going to do with this? Or will they even have the substitutes in the game? I do wonder. I, I feel do... like they would, like, gameplay-wise, they would probably have to. But I do still wonder just exactly how they're going to handle it. I do think, I mean, I'm very much looking for, because I feel like when everyone talks about this remake, they for, they always they think the substitutes aren't around because they never talk about them because they're substitutes. They're god awful. And like, obviously, why yeah, would you play? They're not the units that you're exactly going for. It's just like, oh, fuck, I gotta use this guy now. Like, if you, like, if you want hard mode for, for Fire Emblem 4, um, yeah, use the substitutes in the original game. Trust <laughs> me, you'll get your hard mode right there. But that, that I didn't do. I was like, and it's so weird because Alex, if they do release in May, that was the same month last year I wrapped up my Fire Emblem 4 Let's Play. So one year later, I go straight into the remake of it. That's insane. That is pretty cool, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, you want to be even cooler if it released on the exact day I ended my Fire Emblem 4 Let's Play. You're right, that would be cool. Like, it's like May 22nd. Like, Jesus Christ. If that is it, like, oh man. <laughs> But yeah, that's I'm so yeah, May, you know, Fire Emblem 4 remake. I really hope it's not the Fire Emblem 4 remake, but it's more less he is. And then in June is Luigi Mansions 2 HD, which which is what the J is for. And Marco Romero, when he um, you know, retweeted this, he retweeted with a heart. So basically he's saying that this is definitely gonna happen. Like this is the release schedule because these because the thing is, though, these the rest of these other months, like for here in February, we have another Nintendo. They don't have anything like going on for, um, like anything Nintendo like first party wise coming out in the other, like in April, May, or June. Like we know the release schedule for April and March, but the thing is, though, Nintendo's mostly been sticking with a um uh, a game that's you know a first uh, a first party every month this week, if not re um, related to some sort of DLC, like. Um, this month they have um, Mario vs. Duck Kong um, coming out, and next month I don't remember what game it is, but I do know it's a Nintendo first party game. So that means for April, May, and June they have nothing. So that would so I'm pretty sure what's gonna happen. They're gonna release Paper Mario in April, the Fire Emblem Four remake in May, pa Luigi's Mansion Two in June, and then after they release it, Luigi's Mansion Two, I think that will be the same exact month they announce the Switch to or release reveal what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm very much looking for. If, I mean, if this, but that all depends if the Nintendo Direct airs this this week. And I'm really hoping that I do think Marco Romero has been right because he did say back in like uh, 2022 that there would be we would be getting three Fire Emblem games: a spinoff, a remake, and a new mainline game. And we got Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hosts, which was the spinoff. We got Fire Emblem Engage, which was the mainline. And we apparently, it looks like if his track record is right, which most of the time it has been, we'll be getting the Fire Emblem 4 remake this year in June. God, that would be nice. And that's crazy to think about because we've been getting a Fire Emblem game every single, like, year it looks like. I mean, obviously... That's like two years now. Yeah. And I'm really hope... And, um... We're actually more than that, right? Because Three Houses came out, like... 2019. 2021, right? No, 2019. Oh, really? Yeah, I was gonna say, how many years was Three Houses like between that and uh, Three Hopes? Uh, that was roughly three, because it came out in July of 2019, and then it released in June of 2022. Okay, oh yeah, so then it's it's mainly been just once Three Hopes hit in 2022 that now it's gone from a three-year format of Fire Emblem to a one-year format. Yeah, that's crazy to think. Like, seriously, like, Fire Emblem has it really been... really is. It's so crazy to think that this niche franchise that I've been thinking about has grown incredibly. It's become less niche. Yeah. Like, seriously... more mainstream, if anything. Yeah, it's, like, seriously, like, I know a lot... But a lot of people have been, like, hating that Fire Emblem has been getting more mainstream compared to, you know, Mario, because people say that Fire Emblem has just been becoming anime now. It's, like... Guys, it's not. <laughs> well, a little bit, but not as much as people complain it to be, I think. Mm -hmm. um, there are definitely some traits that are, like, there to, what's the word for it, to kind of, like, get people into it, you know? Yeah, like, Smash has definitely helped out a lot, obviously. Oh, absolutely. I definitely think that. Mm -hmm. Because Smash is how a lot of people have even come to know they're like oh fire emblem exists yeah like if it wasn't for Who's melee if it wasn't for smash brothers melee we wouldn't even be talking about fire emblem in this day and age probably 
It's true. Probably not. Mm hmm. And in case you guys are wondering, and Alex, just so you know, I will, if this game is true, which most likely it is, unfortunately, I will be doing news and let's play this as a day one playthrough with Crystal, just so you know, because mm -hmm. I did promise her it, and you know how much she I'm loves Fire on the Floor. Like, she's very familiar. It's weird. Be... Because she's very familiar with Fire on the Floor, but she's not familiar that much with uh, Udral, though. I mean, with uh, Thracia, I mean. That's fair, though, because I think that Fire Emblem 4 kind of, like, hits different points that you draw doesn't, and then you draw... Ah, uh, fuck. Thracia. <laughs> then, uh, then Thracia, and Thracia is, like... I think that it's, like, two different kinds of players that like FE5 or FE4 more, and I personally like FE4 more, but I also understand why, like, FE5 can be just so much fun sometimes. Mm -hmm. With me, I like them both uh, equally, though. That's fair. I think I like the, the story of FE4 more, though I will say that Same. FE5 story is also incredibly good. And with this remake, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how, what they do, because uh, you draw in general is a pretty dark um, um timeline for Fire Emblem. Like, not in terms of like... it's as dark as, like, probably Three Houses. Like, Crystal... Like, it's not darker, because... Oh, three totally houses, darker. Like... Well, yeah, but even then, like... <laughs> You have three houses where they like the crest experiments, like child experimentation and like all that shit. And then like the fucking like the crest system as a whole was like definitely like a parallel to the holy blood system. And <coughs> I had to sneeze. I see. Um, but it's like a parallel to the holy blood system because even like the mechanic was a parallel to like holy blood back in FE4. Um, but then it's that same kind of criteria of like, oh, you have a crest, like, you have holy blood, like, you are now, like, the heir, like, you are now important, like, you don't have that, go fuck yourself. Yeah, but and... I do think that they, that this will be actually not only that, I think this will be the first Fire Emblem game that ever sees an M rating. I thought Fates would be the first one, but Crystal herself even thinks this has to be the first Fire Emblem game that gets a mature rating. I think that if they don't, like, censor things, like, they keep the story as is, it would 100% require an M rating. Oh yeah, I, totally. I, I definitely think that. Um, and even if, because you know the manga of, uh, of FE4, right? Yes, Crystal know. has referenced it very much so in our playthrough, and it's talked about I, a lot. I would have too. I don't blame <laughs> I don't blame them. Neither do I. But uh, yeah, it's it's an incredibly good like piece of media. I recommend it. Everybody gives it a read if they like FE4's story, even like tangentially. Um... Even though, like, sometimes with the, the gameplay aspect of it, it can be like, hey, it's a little skewed, or like, this can't really happen. Um, but no, it is it is super good, and I think that if you're ever confused about anything in the FE4 story, then it can give some much-needed clarity for it, since at the time, it wasn't the best storytelling device, like, in terms of fe 4 story, like, the manga definitely can go into, like, deeper things. Um, and also, like, take, like, have different takes on it, like, Trevant, um, as well as, like, just all of the stuff going on with... Ignore anything that happens with, like, Eldigan and Lachesis, even though I fucking love Eldigan. Um, ignore, like, anything that goes on in that manga, because it's weird. Um, but aside from that, it's great. <laughs> mm hmm So, yeah. And all the stuff with Lewin. Love it. Oh my god. And plus, like, like, and I also think it'll be a, a get an M rain because, you know, like, of how, like, some characters, like, you know, some, uh, some of this can play into the story. Like, I'm gonna show this in chat. Just so you know, some of this can take place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm, I was kind of skirting around that, which is also like, hey, like, anything with Elden in the is just. Like skin those pages, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I very yeah. much think this game, if it is true, it's going to get an M rating. If it doesn't, there's some, they either must have changed the story drastically to the point it's not even FE4 anymore. Well, they might whitewash it a little bit, which, to be honest, would kind of suck. Yeah, because, um, like, if they do that, then the story, it's not FE4 anymore. It's basically a discount FE4. Yeah, and I think that, like, part of the reason why Joke Draw is so good is because it's that like dark setting and just like that hopelessness sometimes like just how different in terms of like the themes 
it can feel to other Fire Emblem games, because for pretty much all of the other, like, Fire Emblem games, it's pretty hopeful all the time. Like, there might be a chapter or two where it's like, oh, like, uh, th things are bad, but we'll, we'll turn things around. Mm -hmm. But FE4, like, things are genuinely bad at times. Like, it gets real bad. Yeah. And you pull through, but there's never a point where it's like, and we're good, like, a chapter later. Especially because, like, the chapters are so goddamn long. Yeah. I really consider, like, each castle to, like, that you take over to kind of be its own chapter. Like, very much so. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, I, I don't know. though, that, um... Oh, man, what was I gonna say? Like, that's the thing. Like, with, with each, like, chapter, like, there's never, like, a good moment. And the thing is, though, that I feel like that... We see what they did with Gaiden, like how with Shadows of Valentia, that was that went from being a story with like a game with like no story to a goddamn masterpiece of artwork, basically. Oh well, yeah, like Gaiden was still like pretty good in terms of like story because it's like it had some stuff, but I think that the presentation of Echoes made it a lot better because it made the story I think a lot easier to digest. Um having all those cutaways to yeah. like and it actually felt and stuff. fun to play like, yeah no it's i feel like echoes is while the gameplay aspect of it is kind of the same in terms of like clunky really clunky at times there's like some secrets that what echoes can be cryptic but yeah oh yeah yeah uh, i'm trying to remember i'm rem trying to remember what about like how sometimes Echoes and its gameplay with the get some uh, hit rates. <laughs> well, there's like echoes with the swamps, echoes with the hit rates. Oh god. Echoes with like honestly, I thought the magic was neat because um, it kind of reminded me of like also what happens in FE1 where it's like all right, not everybody has a real magic stat, but also nobody has a fucking rest stat. And so it, it ignores it terrain. What? It ignores terrain too. Yeah, it does ignore Which terrain. we did, like, we, we, we... The we, accuracy is just the accuracy of the spell. Which, if you think about it, we've seen that recently in not only in three houses and engaged, so it would make it... So it might make a return here, too. Yeah. Though I think that it was also interesting because, if I remember correctly, in Echoes, like, it was literally just the accuracy of the spell. Yeah. And nothing else about, like, your dodging capabilities. Skill didn't play a factor. Capabilities to hit. What? Dex didn't play a factor at all. Yeah. At least... I believe so. I don't remember. No, it, it affected the like crit still. rate. It affected the crit rate, not the hit rate, though. Well, yeah. But, like, with the hit rates being as shoddy as they were, and then you have, like, Sonya coming in with Excalibur, it's like, oh, oh God. This is good. Like, that's you're, neat. <laughs> you're making me see the future of our eventual Echoes playthrough. Can't wait. Oh, God. I'm I, at... will, uh, I will probably always pick Sonya over Dean. Because you'll get his brave sword earlier, so you can actually use it to fight Grief, which is pretty nice. Oh, seriously? Um, having another Excalibur mage is never a bad thing, in my opinion. Um, especially because when doesn't Bowie have... get Excalibur though? Bowie does get Excalibur. However, why not have more than one person that can oh, use okay. Excalibur? I guess it and is. she's kind of better for it too because she's faster, so she'll be able to like actually utilize it better because of its low weight. Characters, learn spells... Because I think that uh, in Celica's route, the people that can get Excalibur, I think are... I don't know if May can get it. I don't think she does. Because uh, I think that she, she can't get Excalibur. Bowie does L18? Oh my god. I know she gets Aura, but... Yeah, oh, she... Yeah, no, he does get Excalibur, but that's the thing. It's super late. Like, he would need to be level 18 as a mage. And she gets it immediately. Oh my god, damn. No, yeah, she comes with it, which is super good. And you Seriously, can Jesse can Jesse get like level Jesse. 2? Yeah, he can. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh yeah, that's right. The, like decent that's right, the, the pitchfork. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, there is the pitchfork. Like, some of the mercenaries have, like, decent spell lists. Not including, uh, I believe, Saber. Because uh, uh, yeah. like Seraph and shit, Ugh. and he also gets Physic, which isn't bad if you just want to make wow. a healer. Kamui gets Excalibur a little seven and Freeze a little five. I haven't really seen a lot of people with Freeze in uh, in Echoes when playing it. Mm -hmm. I think that I, 
I would like to at some point just fucking do a run where all of the classes are randomized in Echoes. I think that'd be funny. I do think there is a randomizer just for Echoes, but I haven't downloaded it. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting just to see, like, what people would turn into and just... Could I do it? Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a device that allows me to do that, but I, it's not like technically a randomizer though. Fair. And so yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this news. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully this uh, Nintendo Direct is true. And you know that if the, if the Nintendo Direct airs, I really hope that Fire Emblem 4 is the first thing they show up. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Bye.